Doc, uh, Dr. Duffy Bell is the director of Center of Taiwan Studies at SOAS. Um, so doc, uh, Dr. Bell, from what I noticed, this this year actually has been a lot of a uh, film screening of Taiwan cinema taking place in SOAS. On one hand, actually that was, um, I think it's great because actually it's a constant presence of Taiwan films. But on the other hand, actually as an audience, sometimes actually we don't know when the film festival begins and when it ends. So this seems to be actually the challenge of a, a practice of a festival. And I don't know if this actually is your intention to, to, to have an alternative way of uh, screening films. But, you know, just tell us how you begin this activity and what you aim to achieve and who are your audiences? Okay, well, a lot of questions there. I mean, we've, we've been interested in film at SOAS uh, and Taiwan film for a, a, a long time. I mean, we've had a Taiwan film course now for about maybe six, seven years. Um, for the Taiwan Center, we haven't really focused too much on, on uh, Taiwan film. We've tended to, over the last few years, we've started to show one or two films uh, over the, um, uh, over the year. For example, last year we showed Tui um, Xin uh, Ling's Gong Liao Ni Hao Ma, How Are You Gong Liao? Um, and then... And that was to the public or just for the that students? We, what we did was to integrate that into the, um, into the summer school. And uh, we did a, a, um, a, Q &A, a Skype Q&A with the director. Um, so that kind of um, was a kind of a trial to see how this kind of thing would, would work. Um, the way we tend to we try and look at film has tended to be more um, as, a, as a text for understanding Taiwan rather than looking at film uh, in a kind of film studies um, way. So we're trying to kind of um, try to kind of understand Taiwan through uh, film and documentaries. Um, I mean, it's something that I've been increasingly interested in in my teaching. In other words, uh, I've been finding using documentaries and sometimes film as well um, as a kind of a uh, extra learning resource for students. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I think probably we put so much stress on documentaries uh, in this, this series. Now one of the elements of your question was what kind of audience? Mm, uh, but I guess we're trying for multiple audiences. Um, of course the core audience is designed for our students. Students that are here at SOAS studying uh, Taiwan Studies courses. Um, so all, yes, I'd say all the films we've chosen in this 10 film series have tended to be linked to a number of kind of key themes uh, that we address in our courses. Uh, politics in Taiwan, cross-strait uh, relations, uh, nationalism, relations between China, Taiwan, uh, Japan, uh, Taiwan's modern history and how that kind of affects uh, national identity in Taiwan. Um, social change. So, for example, um, the film that you're showing today, uh, Feng Gui Lai De Ren, is really a, a wonderful case of um, how Taiwan is changing in the 1980s. Internal migration, clashes of values between young and, and old. Um, so, we're looking to, um, but at so it's one of the things we've always tried to do is to reach out beyond just our own students. Um, so, of course, we, we're um, the whole title is Understanding Taiwan Through Film and Documentary. So, of course, uh, we'd like to uh, see non-Taiwan studies people, or Taiwan studies people um, um, beyond the academic uh, setting. So we've been trying to kind of advertise it as, as broadly as, as possible. But the key thing, of course, is to come back that we, um, we're trying to do this in an academic way and to, uh, to promote discussion of the key themes that are raised in mm -hmm. the film. So the program itself actually is understand Taiwan through films and documentary. In that case, actually, is your intention really is not to uh, formulate a film festival per se. So, um, but because the the program uh, is aiming at students, staff, uh, scholars, but actually also beyond Taiwan studies and perhaps uh, reach out to general public. So, for an activity as such, do you have any financial resources or um, any arrangements that to in, enable you facilitate such a program? Okay. Um, you mean how do we kind of uh, market the program? 
Um, how do you firstly able to put a program as such available to the public? Um, you know, is it really just from the library and then, um, you know, just within the university resources? Or in fact, you have to get a grant, for example, especially, in order to make it a reality. And if so, what kind of grant is it? How much you get the resources in order to make this uh, a reality? Okay, uh, so this project um, is supported by the Ministry of Taiwan Ministry of Culture uh, under their Spotlight uh, Taiwan uh, series. Um, so, um, so that's that's where we got the, got the money from. Um, um, I mean, I'm I'm so pleased with the way the project has developed. Um, regardless of, of future funding, I'm going to make sure this this project continues, maybe on a different scale. Um, we didn't really want to do this in a kind of a film festival uh, manner. I think we really wanted to make sure that the films were distributed quite evenly uh, over the uh, over the term. Because I think. Um, and particularly trying to kind of tie in film screenings with the way the courses are developing. So, for example, some historical ones in uh, in term two, and starting to go into a little bit more depth in the in the second term. Uh, so that was one of the things on our mind. Um, and another thing we wanted to do was to I wanted to really try and keep it on campus rather than going into a um, uh, a cinema, because I felt that that would also help us keep the kind of academic. Uh, mood. I think perhaps students might get a bit intimidated uh, in a cinema setting or when they're um, in a kind of minority um, because one of the, the most important parts of these sessions um, is the Q&A uh, with directors and film scholars but also the uh, discussion uh, at the reception afterwards where people can quite freely approach the directors and, and uh, film scholars. And we've tried to kind of get a mix between um, uh, scholars and filmmakers uh, from both um, uh, the US, Europe, um, and of course Taiwan itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, without actually telling me how much um, finance that you get, but perhaps you can actually help us to understand how you divide, you know, the, the arrangements. So, for example, how much for admin, how much for selecting films, and how much actually for 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 other needs of a, putting such a program up, so we can understand how this may be modelled on by other institutions. Well, I guess the um, uh, the main funding items are going to be. Uh, travel, uh, plane fares for directors or um, to come over, accommodation, uh, catering, um, and um, admin is another uh, significant cost. I mean, the cost of actually um, marketing, putting together posters, uh, website, Facebook, um, these are quite significant actually, particularly if you want to reach out to a kind of a, a broader uh, audience. Mm -hmm. Right, and so by um, so working on this project for a, a year now, can you tell us about the challenges and the reward that you, you know, you experience? Um, one of the big challenges is trying to um, um, fit into directors' schedules. Uh, directors have very very tight schedules, changeable. Um, I mean, in a way, I'm really fortunate that. Our key, one of our key partners in this project is public television in Taiwan. Um, and they've been very helpful in terms of making contact with directors. Once a famous film director dropped out at the last minute, and then uh, Lin Le Chun um, um, saved us and came at very, very short notice. And, uh, and uh, in terms of, I think for me, what I particularly enjoy is uh, the Q&A sessions particularly when I see my own students asking questions, uh, talking to the um, uh, directors afterwards. And then when I'm in office hours, talking to the students, uh, seeing what they've got out of the films, seeing how they, they may be able to bring some of these elements um, that they've seen in the films into their written work or presentations. So for me, that um, that's, gives me a real sense of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So do you think actually you have reached your original end for this particular project? or perhaps even go beyond? Um, I mean, one of the things that I've always wanted to do is to try and make sure uh, that the SOAS Taiwan Studies program is as comprehensive as possible. Um, mm, I mean, I'm, I'm a political scientist. Uh, the former director is an economist. 
Um, and that was why we really wanted to broaden things out. So, for example, um, um, you, uh, Jambi Yu, uh, Nikki, um, uh, Mike Hoare, uh, Isabel, they bring in a very different kind of perspective. Um, uh, bring in more kind of cultural pers perspectives or historical pers perspectives. Uh, and I think, it, uh, I think that's really important for a, uh, a, um, an academic program. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's great for me. It means that I'm exposed to such wonderful things. I mean, I would never be involved with documentary film, feature films, if I wasn't in this kind of field. So again, uh, it's one of the reasons why um, Mondays are often my, my... I prefer Mondays to weekends, mm -hmm. because Taiwan Studies is such a, uh, a great field. Mm -hmm. Right. And so final questions. Do you see, understand Taiwan through film and documentary as a project sustainable? And how is your vision for you, how are you going to further develop it next year or even actually in the next five years? Sustainability is, 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 is always a challenge in academic projects because funding is, uh, for example, this project is, is, we have a one year grant, potentially uh, extended for a couple more, more years. Um, so, I mean, uh, so that's always going to be a, a, a question mark. My own feeling is that uh, I'm going to continue this project no matter what. I mean, because, for example, we have Wang Yen coming and his films really fit into the kind of themes. Um, uh, politics, social change, social movements, um, national identity. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's the perfect kind of uh, feel for us. Um, it's definitely going to be a, a, a challenge, um, but I'm going to try and make sure this, this continues. Okay. Well, thank you very okay. much. Thanks, Mingya. Yeah. And um, I mean, I, I was um, curious, as, as, a, as an audience member, um, and of course you're more of a kind of a film studies person, um, I mean, did you have any kind of impressions of the kind of films we'd, we'd chosen? Because I should say that, at least in this round, um, um, I've been a little bit kind of um, dictatorial in terms of the, um, the films that uh, we've chosen. Probably in the, in the next round, um, we'll, we may kind of change the themes a little bit. But I wonder if you had any impressions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will actually kind of think in this probably more like informal uh, discussion mm. rather than an interviewed um, question. But um, I haven't actually seen all the films arranged. So I think I don't have, maybe my, my impression is very sort of a erratic, mm. yeah. Um, so I think I will just talk about as this week. Um, individually, I think it's all films that I watch, I enjoy. And certainly I always enjoy the film screening with Q&A session. Mm. Either it's for academic purpose or just for the interaction with the audience, because you always get a different dimension uh, of um, to stimulate your thinking. So I think that format itself has always worked very well, whatever kind of film screening. Um, and certainly, you know, but from what you just told me in terms of how you're going to fit into the academic program, I suppose because the way you organize it is very much uh, uh, along with your own vision and your remit. So there is no real model that actually we can say, you know, comparative. But when you are talking about integrating into a academic program, I did have one um, model in my mind to somewhat um, similar, but. Um, when I was teaching film course in Leeds, we do have this core module actually is um, students have to watch a film, but that's what's fitting with our um, program. Mm -hmm. We try to show the film in a local cinema. So the, the, the student will go to the cinema for free, but they will watch with the audience. Oh. Um, and afterwards, obviously, when they come back next week, then we will discuss about the film actually fitting with whatever theme, either author's approach, genre, or whatever, you know, history, national cinema. And, and so, the whole semester of the weekly film program, there, there will be a theme. Even though from the audience perspective, they couldn't see it. They don't understand why this week you are seeing a film that actually shown from Hollywood. Next week, actually, the film in the 1920s, and then you know, and some a horror genre, and you know, all sorts. But th there is a kind of an internal thread that pulling all through. So I, I kind of in my mind thinking, 
that could be actually one way to go and it does work very well and it, it will broaden um, but again it's because why I say there is a similarity is not necessarily what you wanted mm -hmm. uh, and so that that may be actually something that's why I said maybe we can have further discussion should you feel you know you, you want to see what other people do out there then other experience what I had obviously is more of a dedicated film festival and for that kind of festival again then you would choose films for a particular reason either you, you wanted to show the newest documentary of films you know such as Edinburgh Spotlight or you want to uh, show a, a particular dimension of a cultural discussion a debate so gender for mm -hmm. example um, but again you know because if this doesn't fit with your thinking then it's not necessary. So I think it's, it's completely fine that like you developed a model that could suit your purpose the, the most. I mean, I should. I mean, one of the things that really gave me inspiration to do mm. this was uh, I, I was I was I started teaching a comparative politics of Northeast Asia class, mm. and I was trying to learn more about South Korea. Mm. And in my kind of web searches, I discovered there was a course in America called um, Understanding Korean Politics Through Film. Um, and, uh, and I started using those films in, in my teaching, let's say, was it, uh, two years ago. And then I started thinking to myself, this would be wonderful to do this kind of course. Whether I ever, ever will do a pure course like this, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, maybe it's something for the future once we have a kind of a, a larger program. Because my sense is that, for example, the way we study Taiwan film in our film course, um, often the actual content or the social kind of background or political background isn't as prominent as things like, I don't know, lighting and that kind of kind of film studies approach. Um, and it can be quite difficult, I think, for people who are doing Taiwan studies to make that kind of adjustment. Mm, mm, mm. Yes.